So in today's class, we'll be doing some numericals, okay? Uh, whatever that has appeared in your examination, that forward sweep and backward sweep, sweep problem, and uh, we'll be uh, doing also this study, uh, this thing, uh, you know, CT uh, transformation, current transformation on that one. So time stamping problem will be doing. So yeah, so let's get started. So in yesterday's class, we were at, uh, we were held at this, uh, where, do, where, where did we stop? Do you remember? Yes, sir. Uh, so in the, uh, sample, yeah, I was teaching you regarding the sampling theorem. So basically what happens is that the sampling theorem and from that only we, we you have a problem on this sampling error, okay? The, yes, sir. Yeah. So primarily the sampling theorem states that the band limited signal, a signal which is limited by certain range, band that means band limited signal can be uniquely can be uniquely specified. by its samples basically what does it mean that the signal if you have to pass a signal this is a signal from one end and you pass the signal to one end, another end so this signal i told, told you should be equal to twice of twice the value okay so the theorem states state that it's specified by its sampled values sample sorry sampled values if and only if if and only if the sampling frequency, if and only if the sampling frequency will be how, how many times? Ronald, tell me how many the times uh, sampling frequency component in the fundamental fundamental frequency would be twice frequency would be signal would be at least two times okay so it should be so that means this is only possible if it is greater than or equal to the fundamental frequency now see what basically what happens there is a diagram also there in your see i have i will roughly make that okay so that you understand this suppose this is your this is your PMU, PM, PMU phase measurement unit. So you have voltage going through it. So this is in order to get the voltage at a measurable rate. What you do is that you connect a potential transformer. Because I told you in the very beginning, voice is clear. Everything is clear. Any problem? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so you have 11 kV. You have at the range of 132 kV. But at the outlet, we need only at 220 volts. So this potential transformer is, is a transformer that will reduce the ratio of the voltage such that it can be measured. And then you have a current transformer here. This current transformer basically can either see what it does is that it will reduce this. It will attenuate the signal. The range of the current transformer would be some, suppose the resistance of the line is 5 ohms. Okay, and the current transformer will have a ratio of like 400 to 5 amps. So that would mean if you have a resistance of 5 ohms, the load that it will take or the voltage it will showcase would be 0.5 into 5 amps. Problems also we have done like this. So this would be in the range of this 2.5 volts. So this is your current transformer. Similarly, your potential transformer, what it does primarily is that voltage is large in the beginning it will reduce it here current is also in a large current is large current would be large and voltage is large so basically what it does is that it reduces the current so that reduces current and so that it is measurable why measurable because we have to connect it to the computer system over there okay and yes, here, here also this signal it starts to attenuate. Attenuate means see to amplify it means to improve the signal. 
amplification would mean to increase it attenuate would mean to attenuate attenuation means to decrease it to a certain decrease. range such that we can measure it and from here it goes to the phase measurement unit phase measurement unit okay so this is the concept if you look at your slides also so this is basically the concept so there's a current transformer burden okay what is this what does it mean the a load may be see when we are con connecting burden in, in in the case of a power system means any type of load burden would refer to a load load would refer to basically a type of element that is connected it can be a resistor it can be an inductor okay uh, inductor sorry inductor so this is the type of element that is connected and because of this burden would mean load and this element generates a different type of current okay so when we talk okay. about the load load directly refers to current in case of the power system suppose in your right. home, you are you are putting on television you just have an energy meter connected in your house single phase energy meter you notice when you are putting a television and go outside to the energy meter there is some blinking going on of blinking so if you are putting okay putting more geyser or more element of motoring load or pumping load that will start to blink at a faster rate. When it starts okay. to blink at a faster rate, it means more current is drawn out from the circuit. More current is getting drawn out. So indirectly, when you are putting any load, more current gets generated. So indirectly in the power system, we refer load means current. Okay. So load would mean yes, the sir. amount of current. So now the thing is that the now, suppose you have a current transformer which has a CTR current transformer ratio. Like if this, a current transformer is there, which has a CTR in the range of 200 is to 5. Okay. So this CTR and you have connected a load, connected a load of connected at 2.5 ohms. Okay. Uh, this thing. So earlier also, now the voltage drop here would be equal to I into R. Okay, now now you tell yes, me the, now you tell me the value. What would be the voltage that would be produced here? What would the I, I sir, two point five into two point five into uh, five, sir. Two point two point five into five. Very good. Two point five into five. So how much that would be, uh, that will turn out? No, that will turn out how much? Two point five into five would be equal to twelve point two five, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So this major attraction that PMO attracts is that what it does is that PMO will measure the local frequency and uh, there in the PMO, the phaser measurement unit, there is an, how does it uh, estimate whether the power is, excessive power is flowing in the transmission line or across the country. So it measures with the help of, see basically this is one uh, reference, just another reference, this is one line, this is another line. So it is going there's a PMO connected here. Okay. Then yes. there's another PMO connected here. So definitely there would be, there is voltage here. There is voltage here too. Then there is an angle associated with, there is an angle associated. How PMO identifies, you know, it just sees the angular difference between these points. And, uh, uh, this sigma 1 minus sigma 2. On base on that, it will estimate that the excessive power flows in the tie lines or transmission power lines across the countries is governed by this. So now let's suppose we have a we have a, uh, in the very beginning I have told you I let I will save this okay I will save this as a PDF I'll move to the next part this is self-explanatory okay because time is left um, I have saved I have saved it. Don't worry, okay, I, have, I have saved it for you. If you want to note down, you, yes, note, sir. you, note, you can note it down also. It is... Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. So basically what we are having here is, we are having this electronic intelligent devices, IEDs. Okay. Yes, sir. Which, which are connected with, with reference to SCADA. SCADA primarily stores the information. Okay. SCADA does okay. not do anything. It is the data collector. Okay. Yes, sir. Data collector. It is not doing any primary action. Data collector where 
data of the power system is stored inside yes, this data. It's just a link between the, the measurement, measuring data. It is just acting as a link, okay? Yes, sir. Link. This is acting as a link. What the actual, what, what actual thing, actual information is present in the phasor measurement unit, right? And yes, sir. The power system, you see voltage, current, all the data is actually present here. But the SCADA is a link between the intelligent devices, which which will be controlling the flow. This is for the controlling the flow. And from here we have the phasor measurement units PMU, okay, which are which are indirectly which are controlling C, which are uh, getting the information from this. And from this PMU only we have that VAMS based control wide area measurement wide area applications wide area applications will applications take. yeah you can see from your slide also it is in a much better yeah. form so from there you see here then you have energy management applications okay and further you can connect uh, you can see the flow of this okay visual tools and other things i'll write it here also you can do visualize it and here also visual tools in nowadays i don't know uh, but uh, in our times, we were using the Power World Simulator. Is it there in uh, VIT, Power World Simulator? For no, simul sir. Huh? No, sir. It must be there, no? Power World Simulator or PSCAD software you're using? PSCAD. Um, sir, yes, sir. We're using... Um, PSCAD. Yeah, yeah, Tinkercad. Then uh, okay. we have used uh, Proteus. I think you must have used My Power as well. Um, no, sir, not with that. Okay, okay, okay. Let's you know uh, MATLAB is also having all the facilities, but for visualization yes, purpose, the best software is Power World Simulator, and for analysis purpose, PSCAD is there. Okay, so okay. what am wh how it is now? Can I move to the next slide? Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. yeah. So basically, if you look at this <clears throat> system, we have one bus over here. This is my bus one, okay yesterday's class in the two sessions like when you have studied the Gossi Dell and other things now I was just yes, going sir. I was just going through your syllabus in your yes, syllabus sir. easier methods are there here DC sweep AC sweep is there okay yes, and sir. you have uh, this thing DC power flow equations DC load flow in that those two questions you are getting now those are very easy easy things if you can do Gossi Dell then you can yes, move. Sir. this is way too easy you know you they ask only one iteration okay in the examination okay, they cannot ask you more iterations because time is not there right yes so sir here here you see usually a phase of measurement unit would be uh, connected and in between in a power system the transmission line if you are seeing suppose this is a tower and this is a transmission line going so this transmission line is predominantly inductive this is predominantly inductive okay so yeah. this, this is predominantly inductive what does it mean predominantly inductive you should see in our home in older days we used to have heater heater coil or when there's cold season we also have this blower heater coils they produce a okay. lot of heat why because they are predominantly resistive in nature so resistance a form of heat is a form of i square r power loss i square okay. r i square r loss is the heat loss but here if we make it more predominantly inductive what does that mean the excel value would be very very large compared to r hence r hence there is no heating no heating no loss no loss but yes there would be drop drop is there drop is in form of ixl okay so there is a drop okay. in this inductance there cannot be a drop there cannot be a loss in in the inductance you know why there right, cannot sir. cannot be loss in inductance i'll show you how your power 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 value is equal to vi cos phi right for the yes, sir for the resistive load, you have V and I synchronized. Okay. You have V if this yeah. I is here. So your angle, this phi is equal to zero degrees. Zero. So you have unity power factor. So this is for P, right. PR, I'll write for resistive. But for PL, 
I have shown you this is lagging. So it for pure PL, this is VI cos, and here the angle is 90 degree. Cos 90, 90. Degree zero. So there zero. cannot there cannot be loss in an inductor, even there cannot be loss in a capacitor. Because capacitor, you can see this angle will become cos of minus 90 degree. Minus 90. Okay, so there cannot be loss here. Remember those things, okay? So this transmission line is predominantly inductive, hence the transmission line can be represented. We can ignore the resistance. Although there is represented by impedance R plus J XL, but the R part, but the XL part is very, very large compared to R. Suppose this is 10 uh, ohms and, and uh, R part is 0 0.001, so which is very negligible. Uh, if your XL part is 10 ohms, and R part is equal to 0 0.001. So you can neglect the R part and you can take the XL part. So that's why we represent this uh, transmission line. This is the transmission line actually. Okay, is represented transmission line is represented by only reactants. By only reactants. Okay, only reactants will represent the transmission line. Now you have a phase. Uh, now you have another after see you you are transferring the data to the bus one okay bus one from bus one whatever the data is going if phase of measurement unit is connected then at the secondary side one phase of measurement unit is connected so this is bus two so this is how the but this is suppose v2 at an angle of uh, zero degree and this is v1 at an angle of zero degree so the phase angle difference now to understand this phase angle difference first of all we need to understand how how what is the error and how much ct burden and all that i'll <clears throat> yeah so to understand the factor basically what happens yesterday i had shown you right that part sampling error did i show sampling error and all that 2800 i think i have shown you that part or i have not shown hmm? The sampling error or sampling error I have shown or not? Oh, yeah, wait. No, 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 no. no I'm not sure. Yeah, wait, one second. Yeah. So I'll just see that this part I've shown and which I have not shown. Okay. So, so uh, yesterday we didn't buy yeah. data monitoring. Yeah, yeah. And uh, synchronous dynamics and PFU we just started. Okay, look, no, okay. Now now yeah, yeah. Now let me start. See time period. <laughs> See, normally in India, we will have we are having the time period of the time period of a 50 hertz. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. This is the frequency that is offered in India 50 hertz. Correct. In America, it is 60 hertz. Yes, sir. Why in India it is 50 hertz? Can you tell me? Later sir, in the. Uh, can you tell me? Sir, it was because the Britishers had kept it at 50. Yeah, and then... yeah exactly correct. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Have I told you or you? What yes, sir, sir. You were mentioned in the first class. Okay. Current voltage uh, wave. So now see the time period is the frequency. Inverse of the frequency is 1 by time. So this, yes, frequen sir. this frequency would be become 1 by 50 hertz. So this 1 by 50 hertz, if you see, uh, if you convert it, it becomes how many seconds? You just convert this 1 by 50 1 by 5 would be equal to 0 0.2. Okay, right, so sir. this is 0 0.02 seconds. Okay, yeah. if I if I want to express it in milliseconds, I can write 20 milliseconds. Okay. Yes, sir. This 0 0.02 in milliseconds can be written as 20 milliseconds. So yeah, basic uh, so this 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 means that sampling now say say we have a sampling rate for rate for one kilohertz. So for one kilohertz, the sampling rate, sampling rate means the time period. So time period would mean one by sampling rate, one by frequency. So this by, one, by frequency, yeah. one by one kilohertz will become equal to one millisecond because this is yes, one sir. divided by 10 power three. So this yes, one sir. divided by 10 power three will become 10 power minus two. So this is nothing but one millisecond. Okay. So okay. We, we, we noticed that if for 50 hertz, Okay, for 50 hertz, uh, we are having the sampling sampling time equal to 0 0.02 seconds. Okay, or we are having it equal to 20 milliseconds, right? 20 yes, milliseconds, sir. we just noticed it. And basically, these are the same 
but how many samples per second we will be having okay how many sa samples per second so this sam uh, per second means you have to <coughs> so in a 50 hertz frequency we will have 20 basically 20 samples 20 samples per second yes sir. 20 samples per second that would mean you see full rotation is 360 degree right this is yeah. like 360 degree so this angle of 360 degree in a wave this is at zero i have told you about radians and degrees right yesterday zero yes, sir. this is pi this is 2 pi so i will have like uh, in a 2 pi period in this duration suppose i give a sampling error of 0 0.01 so that 0 0.01 would mean uh, I have to divide if I have to take for a full cycle, full cycle is at 2 pi and in 2 pi 20 samples are there. So if I had to calculate the sample error for this whole wave, so it would be if the sampling primarily error is mentioned 0 0.01, then I have to multiply this by 2 pi and divide by 20 because I will be getting 20 samples in case of 50 hertz frequency in case I am getting 20 samples because I have seen here okay this this yes, is the 20 samples now now you take it down hmm? yes, sir. Okay, sir. Hmm. Because your samples would be equal to cycles per second. And you have this as equal to 20. Hmm? Yeah, you note it down. This part you note down. Then I'll move. And then we will move to the basic problem. Because problem is very important. That is also come in your exam. I was seeing. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, where is that problem I had written? Yeah, here is the problem. Hmm. Okay. So, okay, let's move to the next slide. Sir, one second, sir, one second. Hmm. Hmm. One second, sir. Hmm. Just about to finish. So here, when you said if the sampling rate is one kilohertz, hmm. what 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 did you mean, sir? Uh, if it's if it's one kilohertz, it's taken no no it's, one sample for no, every no. millisecond. No 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 no. See, basically, when I'm saying about the samples, what how yes, how how see, there is something called a stamping error. Okay, that is given okay. as that sampling. Can I move to the next slide to explain that part? Um. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you uh, see when I meant one kilohertz, this is the frequency, right? Okay. Frequency is expert. One hertz would mean one cycle per second. One hertz means this. Fifty hertz means fifty cycles per second, right? Fifty cycles yes, per, per second. Now, if I write 1 kilohertz, see, 1 kilo, I segregate and I write 1 hertz separately. 1 kilo would mean 1000. This would mean hertz would mean basically cycles per second. Now, the time period, sampling rate or the time period, time, time, sorry, time period is the basically the sampling rate. So this sampling rate would be equal to inverse of frequency 1 by t. If it is value is like 1 kilohertz, then this time period would be equal to 1 divided by 1 kilohertz. So that is 1 divided by 1 kilohertz is 1 divided by 10 power 3. That is 10 power yeah. minus 3. That is given as 1 millisecond. Okay, so 1 millisecond. Okay. But in on a similar basis, can you tell me how many fifty hertz we fifty hertz frequency will give you a sampling rate of one by t? That is one by fifty into cycles per second. 
so you will get how many you will get 0 0.02 0 0.02 0 .02 into cycles per second so this 0 0.02 cycles per second would mean uh, what was the value that i told you to 0. express this in millisecond 20 millisecond 20 milliseconds uh, 20 milliseconds into cycles per second okay yes, so here essentially this 20 milliseconds these are the samples that are going through these are the samples that pass for 50 hertz similarly you can do the calculation for 1000 hertz how many samples you have to segregate this part so the second and the second gets cancelled. So this this factor here is the sampling that goes through. Okay. So okay. now you got it. Yes, sir. Shall I move to you take? Yes, sir. You can erase. Huh? Not erase. Can you can share, sir? No, I will just store it. Okay. okay. Now now let let's go to the next slide. Now see there is a concept of phase angle error okay on based upon this phase angle error only we have a problem that has been asked in the uh, in, uh, this exam also the phase angle error primarily is the angular difference okay uh, it, which is derived which is because see when you are connecting the phasor measurement unit so actively the information is getting passed so in the conventional meter, we don't have any time stepping at 10 o'clock. What was the error at 10 o'clock? We cannot measure it. If we cannot measure it, we cannot pass the information. If we cannot pass the information, we cannot communicate. So we don't know right. everything is randomly happening. But in the smart grid, what is why the grid is called smart? Because it knows what are the information, what are the values of voltage, what are the value of current, what is the value of power, uh, active power, reactive power, how apparent power is flowing, how power factors, all these values we are measuring. Okay. How, okay. what is the sending end, what is the receiving end? We have this information with help of IED and PMU. We are sending it and we are connecting this to wide area measurement system from where we are con connecting it. And we also have the information here. Uh, okay. Due to the PMU connected here and also have at the primary as well as, as the secondary end. So this error, so there must be like time stamp would be there. Okay. So the phase angle is which is derived from basically from the time stamp error. Time stamp error. So we usually say that we have we are taken a time let it be so actually nine o'clock it was not nine o'clock it was a little less than that and let's assume yeah. it was it was around 0 0.1 milliseconds less so this 0 0.1 milliseconds our frequency is getting past 50 hertz for 50 hertz yes, how many sir. samples you are getting 20 samples right so frequency 20 samples it is that means in one cycle in one full cycle at two pi cycles how many uh, how many uh, this thing it is passing it is passing how many samples 20 samples okay the 20 in total sir huh the 20 in one full cycle uh 20 for one full cycle and one full yeah. cycle one one full cycle is equal to one full cycle would be equal to two pi radians okay yeah got it. So one full cycle is two pi radians in two pi radians it is passing 20 samples 20 samples suppose okay suppose i say that in 2 pi radians 50 suppose i say that and this this time period of this 50 uh, time we have just seen 1 by 50 we had done it was equal to 0 0.02 or 20 milliseconds right it was 20 milliseconds but now when I say that one millisecond, I will have one millisecond time error. There's a considerable difference between one millisecond and 20 milliseconds. Now, in order to get this phase, this phase angle error, I will say that the 0 0.1 millisecond, okay, 0 0.1 millisecond into 20, sorry, into 2 pi divided by 20 samples will give me, for 0 0.1, it would be equal to this. 
to this angle error. Suppose I say for point two, it would be equal to two pi by twenty. This variable will not change until and unless your frequency is not changing. Okay, if your frequency was something else, if your frequency t was equal to one by sixty, then you if you calculate for one by sixty, you will get near around one. You see, if your frequency was sixty hertz. Okay, then your time period would be equal to 1 by 60. For 1 by 60, if you do 1 by 60 cal in the calculator, how much value you are getting? So, you will get around 1 by 60 would be 0. Point, uh, 0 0.01 milliseconds, near about that. Yes, sir. 0 0.01 milliseconds. It's 10 milliseconds. So, uh, so, 10 milliseconds. You, you are just seeing there is a considerable difference. So, this 10 milliseconds will not pass 20 samples per second. How many samples it will pass? It will pass 10. 10, 10 samples per second. Okay. So depending yes, upon the, that, sam, you see, so you are seeing that actually they have not given any explanation. Like that only they teach there. Huh? Only move the slides. Yes. Huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is nonsense. Then how student will understand? So this is 0 0.0314 radians. So you remember this, all these angle would be in terms of radians. It will not be in terms of degree. Since we have taken this as the circle unit as in terms of radians. Now, the primarily, now we will move to the problem. Okay, you have noted this down. Uh, one second, sir. Yeah, you note this down. Now, once we solve the problem, you will feel, and we will not take any break. Okay, even if the time gets over, now I am fresh, we will continue. I will send you the link, yes, link Im immediately. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, don't worry about that. We will have three classes. Yes, sir. Yeah. <coughs> oh. Okay. Take it down. Aram so you should learn nicely, okay? No problem. Yes, if you have any doubts, now you can WhatsApp me also. Ah, sir. Or or mail me also. If you are not understanding any part, like here you are you think the time is less than all, I can answer. Okay. Um, yes, I uh, done now. Huh? Okay, now let's go for a problem. I think it had come in some of the exams, some paper I saw. Okay, see the power flow, the power flow on transmission line, line in figure. Uh, where is that figure? I have not written over here. Okay, F figure you have, you open that. Huh? Um, sir, one second. Sir, do you remember the question number? Wait, wait. I'll just open it. One sec, one sec. They are in the notebook. I have not taken. I just did not take the figure only. I just wrote the question. And yeah. So the, yeah, let me write the question first. Okay. In figure two, yes, question, question number, in wide area measurements, it is there. Wide area measurements, no? I think it is yes, yeah like this. There is a PMU, okay. Uh, there's uh, one more PMU here, and this is like the bus, and this is I think okay yeah. The power flow on a transmission line in Figure Two is five per unit, and the voltage, the voltage at both bus bars both bus bars is one per unit so this voltage here is one per unit here also one per unit that okay here also one per unit voltage is one per unit okay the system frequency is 50 now see here the important here what he has written the system frequency when he says the system frequency is 50 hertz immediately you should come to mind if he gives the stamping error point 0.1 then i what i will write i will directly write 2 pi by 20 because for 50 hertz i know that there are 20 samples if he writes mm -hmm. 60 hertz immediately you have to do whatever the sampling error 2, 2 pi, pi by 10. 10 very good the system frequency is the system frequency is 50 hertz very good yes sir. the power flow estimated using phase angle difference between the power flow the, the power flow is estimated 
estimated by using phase angle difference phase angle difference phase angle difference between 1 and 2 1 and two. that is the line 1 and 2 that is given as 5 1 minus 5 2 okay now it states that the measurement of the phase measurement of the phase angle phase angle phi 1 has a time stamp has a time stamp error time stamp error equal to 0 0.1 milliseconds and that of phase 2 and that of phase 2 is 0. If the phase 2 error was there then you had to minus it and then multiply it. If there was some if there is some error here now suppose this was 0 0.1 milliseconds if here it was 0 0.5 milliseconds then you have to calculate this value okay. Okay find the yeah, error. Right. In, okay now it is asking you find the error find the error in the estimated find the error in the estimated power flow okay so how do you go about this problem is the first thing that you have to understand is that the equation for the power which you might have studied in the machines also is given as e into v x sine theta have you studied this equation is there now in the yes, machine now oh, so here this theta represents the angular difference between the line 1 and line 2. So here they are they have already mentioned this is phi 1 minus phi 2. So this okay so you can write this value as and here they have mentioned this as v1 and v2. So this you can directly write p is equal to v1 into v2 divided by x into sine psi 1 minus psi 2 okay sigma 1 uh, sigma 1 minus sigma 2 so what they are mentioning if you look at the question carefully the power flow on transmission and line in this is 5 per unit okay 5 per unit but have they mentioned any base on what base they are doing it uh, so any base is mentioned in the question have you seen there uh, is the power no so if if they have not mentioned any base uh, in the system then they are expressing it in per unit values okay no issue then we will also calculate it in per unit values okay yeah so now you now you look at the now you are looking the now you are looking at the solution right so here this p value is equal to 5 so you have this 5 is equal to v1 v2 x sine phi 1 minus phi 2. What is the value of x? It is given as 1 per unit. Okay, phi in the figure on is 1, uh, the voltage is 1 per unit. What is the value of x? Hmm? x was equal to x, x value. Here the transmission line also we have to, I have told you the transmission line. So this value is j, x value is equal to Sir, um, 0.1 per unit. Yeah. Sir, one, one, one. Sir, yeah. P1 is 1 per unit. Ah, this is 1 per unit. This is also 1 per unit. This is the power. This is the power. The total power. That power flow. This is the power. Okay, so, okay. so the this is the formula for power. So that's why this now here you see this V1 and V2. This is also 1. This is also 1. And this okay. X value then this x value is equal to 0.1 so 1 by x would be equal to 10 right so from here you can get this value 5 is equal to 1 into 1 sine sigma 1 minus sigma 2 and this value of x x uh, value here you calculate it as 10 okay this is 5 divided by 1 by x into right 1 by x so this value of x is 10 so you can write directly 5 is equal to